So after four years of adventuring around in the Jeep, off-roading, doing some overlanding, some camping and stuff, it's been four solid years. I'm finally going to try and do something with the back here. Um, as you can see, it's it's a decent size area for the size of vehicle. If you got the seats laid down, it's you can get a lot of stuff in here. The problem is you end up piling stuff on top of everything. And if you want to get to something on the bottom, you either got to, you know, move the pile, unload the pile. It's really kind of a pain in the butt. So I, you know, I've been going back and forth fighting myself if I wanted to put some sort of drawer system in here you know, and then you could put stuff on top of the drawers, which would still kind of create that, the same idea of piling here, as well as, I don't know, like to limit myself to a drawer size, you know, a lot of people put their tools, I've got a tool bag right here, this thing has got everything I need, you know, within reason for working on something on the trail, uh, you know, chairs, other stuff like that. And then when I put the sleeping gear in here, I, the stove, the food, all that kind of stuff, a cooler, because I, I don't have a fridge. I don't have a fridge in any one of my vehicles yet. I don't know if I'll go with that or not. But I found something that I'm going to try out. I have it here, and it's a shelf system. So it's going to go across somewhere in here, and it's adjustable. And it's probably, we'll see how wide it ends up being once they build it together. But it's going to be a shelf here. And it, so I can put stuff on top and still have, you know, access this big underneath. And it shows that you can still put uh, sliders in here, a fridge underneath it if you want. And it's up high. This is all wasted space up here. I never pile anything this high. And I'm not concerned about vision seeing out the back because you got the big 37 inch tire hanging off the back. I can't see out the rear view mirror anyway. I have to use my side mirrors. So I'm gonna, I gotta get this all cleared out and we're gonna, I'll show you the shelf and what it looks like, but there's these bags I have hanging on both sides and where they're mounted is where the shelf mounts. The shelf mounts to the bolts that hold the hard top onto the tub of the Jeep. There's bolts, you know, it, it bolts going through like a, a little pinch point. And so they're gonna mount there, then it's gonna come up and kind of have to work its way around the roll bar. But this is the most interesting thing about this, is it is from Front Runner, and it's the same, um, like the slimline roof rack that they have. So basically it's the same technology as the roof rack and as the the uh, load bars that I put on the back of the Raptor. Well, they're not on there, but they're uh, I have them all set up so I can put load bars across the bed of the Raptor and mount a tent or awning or whatever else I want to the top of that. So it's the same technology as this Slimline 2 roof rack. And I'll show you how, you know, all the accessories are going to work for this shelf if I ever get a roof rack for the Land Cruiser and whatever I end up doing on the back of the Raptor. So let's go over and take a look at the shelf. Okay, so I have the, the shelving laid out here. So this is the, the basic side piece. It's a, a little L-shaped bracket. And this is going to sit, like here's the window. This is gonna sit right on the edge. And then it's gonna come off and make a U-shape. So off these brackets, go these brackets. And then you've got this wide area here that everything's gonna to mount to. And what the, what the slats look like is this. They're just like the roof rack slats. And in them they have the, the track here and you've got these little holes. So you can take things like these eye hooks which have, they use in a regular um, hex head bolt on one side. And you, you slide these in wherever you want, tighten them down and you can make, you know, eye points, you can, there's things that attach in here that will actually clamp certain things down. So that's pretty handy for, you know, that's what everybody looks for in a roof rack is, is the adjustability of attaching things to the roof rack. And to have that on, on a shelf system, I think it might be pretty cool. So one of the things I've seen in their pictures are they have their tubs. I have these tubs I have these tubs like this from Front Runner, 
and these are supposed to be able to go in there. Now, I think that this one, because it's the bigger one, would go in sideways like this. And then the smaller ones, these are the wolf packs, and I think they have the pup, which is smaller. I think those would mount in like this. So you could get two of the, two of the smaller ones in or one of the bigger ones in. So we're going to test that once it goes in. If that's the case, I can put in, put something like that in up on top of the shelf, which is going to be almost, you know, right up to the roof of the Jeep. This is adjustable too, by the way, all these little holes here that you see. So one bolt, it, it's got four, you know, two bolts here. So these four and these four, you could move it in between any one of those up or down. That's going to be kind of a pain. I, I, I guess I'll, ch I'll get an idea of where it sits before I put all the cross stuff in to figure out just how high I want it. You think you want it as high as you can, um, but you want to be able to get, like if I'm going to use these boxes, to be able to get them in and out easily because you want to maintain as much room underneath as well. So that's pretty cool. The other thing is I got this. Now, some of this stuff, like these boxes I, I've got, not because of this, I got them before, but they're really good because they stack and they really lock into each other and you can put one strap over them and they go in there really good. Nice boxes, lightweight boxes, strong. But any of these accessories, it's not just for this. If they don't happen to work out for this, they could work out for the roof rack or one of the other setups that I'm gonna do. But I saw this thing and I thought this was pretty cool solution. Now it's big, but look at this thing. It's a big water tank and it comes with this bracket here that actually mounts it to these channels. Now this can mount up on a roof rack, which I mean, this is, I think 42 liters, something like that. It's like 20 gallons. I think maybe, maybe 20 gallon, 15, 17 gallons, something like that. But it's, it has a um, hole, a hole here and a bung here where you run a hose out and a tap. So wherever you mount this, you don't have to lift it off. This thing I think would be, you know, you want to keep something this size with this much weight as low as you can, but inside there on that shelf, it might be actually kind of cool. So I got this to try this out. And this is again, all this stuff is from, uh, from front runner. It's a South African company, but they have a, they have an office in just outside of Los Angeles too, where they ship for the U S but everything comes from South Africa to here. And it seems like they, they got some pretty neat stuff. So I'm going to start assembling. Well, first I got to clear out the Jeep. I'm going to start assembling this and I'll, I'll get some stuff as we go along, but that that's pretty much it. That's, that's going to be the shelf. It looks like these pieces here, these are kind of the main bolstering pieces like this, and then those, those rails work off of this center section. And there's three rails. There's the one center and two edges. So we'll see how wide it ends up being and if I can fit any of this stuff or not. But I have some other ideas and we'll get to that once we get it installed. All right, so I'm in the back of the Jeep now and I've got this assembled. As you can see, it's basically just two pieces. And I, I went, Opposite of what I thought, um, I went as high up as I can go with the shelf. I don't know if you can see right there. See, I'm in the bottom hole, so I could have went in any, any one of these four holes. I chose the bottom. Choose the top, it'll lower this all the way down to this edge. And if you look at it in here, it it's, was going to be pretty low. I didn't know, you know how high it was going to be. But the, the other thing is I think that the, the directions say to actually assemble these two first which makes it a nightmare to get these guys in. But these nuts are captive on the backside. They're held in by these spring clips. So if you wanted to adjust this later on, I think you could. So there's three, there's three uh, bolts holding the top on on each side and they are, um, I think they're T40s. They are T40 Torx. So there's three of these bolts. You're going to reuse these bolts. Now on mine, I have these bags here that are held, that are using two of the bolts and they're just leather straps. So I'm, I'm going to try and reuse them and see if I can keep them on there because inside here is where I've got like my um, tire deflation kit, my hose to reinflate, um, just some stuff like that. Stuff that you don't want, you don't need to get to necessarily all the time, but you want it handy. So I, I kind of like these things. Now, 
I've had to use a couple different things. I've got a, an extension here that has a kind of a ball end on it. If you, if you push it all the way on, it locks on, but if you pull it back to here, it gives you a little bit of tilt. And then also I've got my, my one here that really gives you an angle as you're driving that in because I'm, I'm trying to get to these bolts here and this upper part is in the way. Oh, and I also have my little stubby guy here. So it's a little stubby snap-on, and this thing can pivot like this, and that's a three-inch drive, three drive with very fine teeth. I think it's a hundred teeth. So that means you don't, you're not losing a lot of movement. Okay, super hot today. It's um, threatening rain, but it's not raining, which is that kind of sucks, right? Hopefully the camera doesn't go crazy with focus because. I don't think it knows necessarily where to focus right now. Maybe I can lock it off. There, I'll just lock it off. Okay. So these bags have been in here for at least three plus years and they're, they're just a hole in the leather and I figured, oh, with any weight in the bag and movement, that's just going to rip that leather. And it hasn't. It hasn't. The, they're still good, and I'm going to try and reuse them. It, the bolts seem like they're long enough to still go through not only the leather, but this, this new shelf piece as well. So, All right, so that's all three bolts out. I'll show you this, what I was talking about. See how they're just, it's just leather, right? And the bolt goes through it. And then if you use a washer, you got to use a washer on the top. If you use the washer, as you tighten it, it doesn't try and rip and turn the leather with it, within reason, right? So here's the shelf. There is um, two matching ones, so you got to you got to look at which side is left, which is right. You want to mount this all the way to the back according to the directions. Okay, and there's some other slotted holes because there, it looks like there's some locating pins. They look like giant rivets, but I think they're locating pins for the top. So I'll get this back one started first because it doesn't have the bag and the leather. And then it says, once you do it, these holes are slotted this way. And it says, pull it inward. So to me, this is inward. Away, I guess away from the window. So I'm going to pull them inward. I guess if we have a problem later on with it... Uh, with it not lining up on the stuff that goes across, I can readjust, but yeah, there's a good half inch of worth of, of slot there that you can move that. So get the easiest one on first so it can kind of hold you in place. All right, now I'll set up to uh, see what the crossbars look like. I'm sweating like a meatloaf right now. I'm, I've got these doors and stuff closed because the air conditioners are going off in the house, bouncing off the wall and coming over here. So I'm going to suffer through it. All right, so here's what we got. These slats now. I've got three. I've got one that looks like this and two that have a little L bracket. Obviously, the L bracket goes on the back and on the front. And what it says is to take these M8 by 16 hex nuts and we're going to put them in on the bottom and they're going to go into the slots. So I don't know if I'm going to have to move my fire extinguisher yet. But maybe maybe I'll try the, the center one first. So there's one. So he's got holes periodically right here. So you take the nut. slide it in there. Now this part I would imagine is where you want to be real careful because this is the part where you could go too far and actually hit your windows. So I recommend putting your fingers over the edges. Seat belt. Yeah, just hold your finger over the edge. hitting my fire extinguisher, but I can twist it. It's a roll bar mount. All right. 
So now it says adjust side to side. Does that look crooked? Oh, the, I think the camera's crooked. This looks totally crooked. It's not. I think the camera's crooked. <laughs> You're like, dude, that doesn't look right. Okay. So on the bottom of the M8s by 16, we've got flat washer and a nylock. And I will just put these on hand tight. It doesn't mean it's going to stop it from sliding side to side. And I know you can't see it, but where with the, the side platform bracket adjusted all the way up, it's le right level with the very bottom of the window. So that means this is the bottom of the window and this going up is all windows. So this is equal with the window. So if I was to slide it, it would definitely probably hit and break. So we don't want to do that. What I like to do is look and see if the brackets, like if when we tighten it, it's going to bend the brackets in shape or if they're, if they're pretty true. And they look pretty true. I know this looks crooked, but maybe the Jeep is crooked. Okay. So that's that one. I think that back one's going to be hard, harder, hardest to do. I'm probably, I'll probably do this, do that, and then do the back one from where the camera is. But I'll show you what these look like. These have a, see, they have like a, there's a channel on the top here too for probably, you know, locking stuff in. So these are pretty cool. I really like this system where it just uses regular hex bolts and the head of the bolt slides in the T-slot channel. Think about this. Underneath here, I've got the slots, and I've got ideas to, you know, possibly bolt stuff to the underneath as well. That's why I started thinking about getting this up as high as I can. But we'll see. I'll have to wait and see till it's all in here. I've got, I've got ideas, but who knows? is right up against the window right now. Okay. So these these slots for these go this way. The slots for the side brackets go this way. So there's some, some things that hang in between these slots over there. And I guess that's when you adjust this and make your way around the roll bar and stuff. Let me get these nuts on. These nuts. So these are nylocks. If you're not familiar with nylocks, they have a, a nylon part inside there. Acts as a lock washer. With a nylon, you don't want to use any power tools. If you spin them on too fast, you melt the nylon and it becomes useless. So just use a wrench, you know, I got a little wrench here. Something like that. Don't go, don't go using your battery powered stuff on nylocks. Just don't do it. Cause as you spin it, it heats up, it melts the nylon. Okay. So that's there. Now these still can slide and hit the sides. I, I'm not going to tighten them up until I kind of get everything set. I'm going to come around and do that other one. You've seen these two. If I can get out of here. Oh, too big to do this. Okay, so I got it all in. Um, it's pretty straightforward with once you put the slats on. So what I did was I just... I put all three slats on and I just got it to where it was snug to where I could still move it, but that it wouldn't slide and like hit the window. So I started with the back. I centered up each side and I pushed it all the way forward in the slat because there's like a little lip under here. And then I tightened this one down and it went in really easy. Actually, I was able to put them in finger tight and adjust the side to side movement on the center slot. And then the, the final one up here, Snug those off and that's it. It was done. So here it is. Look I'm moving I'm moving the whole Jeep That's solid. That's really solid now 
to check fitment. So here's the uh, the front runner. I think these are called Wolfpack boxes. Okay. So it does go this way. What that means is I can put one in there. If I just get a basic estimate here. Two. I can fit two of these boxes here side by side with some extra room. Now I did already try to fit that water tank up in here and it just, just barely won't go between here and here. But remember, I adjusted this to max height. And looking at this height, I could actually come down. I can adjust these. I know I can adjust it with it all set up like this. Yes, I'm pretty sure that I can. I could adjust this down maybe an inch. If I move this down an inch, it'll be just enough to clear that tank. So the tank could go here and probably two boxes. I'd have to measure it. And my fire extinguisher still is right here. It fits perfectly. That actually might, might be the difference of putting three of these in here. Oh, it's close. It's close fitting three, but they fit this way. So they're, they're right up against this edge. And then I could just put, you know what, with two of them, I could put those eyelets down and just run bungees over it or even straps would work perfect. But they, they it only needs to stop it from hopping because forward and back is this lip on the front and the back. Plus I've got eyelets here, so if you wanted to, you could just go straight over individual boxes by putting in, in this track here. There's track on the top, on the bottom, on the bottom of each slat, and then in the top. So a lot of, lot of different options I have here. Uh, the other cool thing is underneath, between the roll cage, there's a little pocket. I'll try and show it to you here. All right, so right here, there's a, a pocket and what I used to do is I would have paper towels, um, my Baco saw for trees, you know, extra like camp knife, stuff like that shoved in here and it sat in there perfectly. Now it actually has a side from hitting the window and a top because it used to work its way out like the paper towels would work their way out and fall in. But I've got these nice pockets on both sides that I can put all that stuff back in there and even more. So I've got my bag storage still here. I've got these pockets in here. You can see I can fit my whole hand all the way up in there. Put stuff in there and then as well as all this. I think I just, I just multiplied my storage by a lot. I like it. I like it. It turned out really good. You know, it, at first when you look at something that's, that's not assembled, you think, is this really going to be strong? you know, the thin sheet metal kind of stuff, but it, you can see, look at this. You see the whole Jeep movement? That's pretty dang strong. And you're not gonna put, you're not gonna be putting up that much weight up here that's gonna have that kind of force. You gotta think about when you're, when you're off-roading really hard, kind of how, how the vehicle can go back and forth over rocks. You don't want any kind of lateral movement this way because the shelves are about an inch. The slats are about an inch away from the window on both sides. So that's plenty of clearance, even if there was a little bit of movement side to side. But these boxes, you can see even, I think there's different lids you can get for these boxes that go up taller because I still have you know, a good six inches up on top. So if you want to put sleeping bags or jackets or something, something that you could jam in here, it would work. It would work fine. And then I got the, this comes to a, about the center of my, where my roll bar goes across, where the, the light is. I really like it. Cause I don't think, I mean, you know, stacking stuff this high, I, to do this, I was in underneath this. You can still crawl in and out of there easy. So stacking up stuff underneath, I don't think that I'm limiting my underneath storage. And if 
ever down the road I wanted to do a fridge type setup in here or even um, they have drawers at Front Runner. They also have a, a whole slider that, that slides this whole area or you can put a fridge with a slider on one side and there's plenty of room even for a, a decent sized fridge, you know. Got a lot of room there. They have all the actual um, measurements on the website. So if you're if you're interested in something like this and you wonder about maybe you have a specific fridge and slide and you have the measurement from your slide up to here, they have those measurements on the website. I just this wasn't really an installation video, more than hey I I'm gonna try this thing out. And let's see how it works. And I think it's gonna work out really good. But I can tell you one thing, the one thing I want to caution everybody on is the box that it came in when it was all in one tall kind of rectangular box. It was shockingly heavy. It was surprisingly heavy how heavy the box was. Now, take away the cardboard and the packing and all that. That's not that much weight, really. This it's it's got some girth to it. On one side, that's good because, you know, it's going to be strong. On the other side, you're adding I don't know. Again, look on the website at Front Runner. I'm going to say 50 pounds. 50 pounds probably. You know, that's it's pretty heavy. It's spread out across the whole vehicle from the back up, but you are putting it kind of up high at the back end of your of your car. So, but it, it needs to be strong. You know, the individual slats, it's more like those side brackets is what's kind of heavy, but that's where the strength needs to be. You don't want those those able to move like this because that'll allow the whole thing to move over. I like it a lot. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope I was able to kind of show what it was like to, you know, what it might be like for you guys to install this thing. And even if you don't have front runners boxes, these are actually pretty popular. People that people get these boxes that don't have necessarily all the front runner gear. These ones have they have uh, little clips on, on four clips for the lid. So you have four clips for the lid. Some people say that these break, but on the website they do, if they do break, they have um, like spring metal ones to replace it. So if you do have these and they break, just get the metal spring ones. Um, but inside the box, you know, you got all this storage area. Now these aren't dust proof because in the bottom, I don't know if you can see that there's one two, three, four, like drain holes or whatever. So if you were going to use these on the outside, there's also, yeah, just those four holes. But there's a lot of little holes around like this where you can tie it down. It's a good box. But you can also get those ones from like Home Depot or whatever. But they have these, they're always weird sizes. The unique thing about these boxes are that they stack. They stack on top of each other and lock in. So if I put, I can put two underneath here that stack and lock in. One, two here, I can easily get four boxes or even two, four, six boxes in here. And everything would be, and you can label, you know, label these things. I like them. I like, I just like that they fit in here. The other thing, again, if you, if you want them to be more weatherproof, I guess you would seal those bottom holes. And the lid doesn't have any kind of gasket, so just, just know that if you're going to put these up on your roof rack. But if you're going to store stuff like uh, recovery gear or something like that, these put right up on your roof rack if you have a frontline roof rack and, and use the little tie down. I think it's a, a pretty cool system. I like the idea that whatever I come up with here, I could also use on the back of the Raptor because I have the same slats, but they call them load bars. And then if I do decide to get the roof rack from front, front, from front Runner, it's the Slimline 2 roof rack for the Land Cruiser. Same stuff. I can use this stuff on there. I can use any ideas I come up with or, or different tie downs. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. It was a lot of fun making it, putting this thing in. I'm really happy with it. We'll see how it works off-road. Thanks for watching.